Welcome back. All right, so three days ago, uh, Kyle Turris retired. Um, he is joining the Coquitlam based team in the BCHL to work as uh, a special advisor to the general manager and player development coach. Just reading that off the site. So Kyle Turris's career in the NHL is done. And what's interesting with Kyle Turris is it's not that long ago. He was wearing a Sens jersey and I loved the guy. And for Kyle Turris, it was, it was, it feels like it was a brief time that he was a really good forward and he, and, and again, not first line, never really reached, I think, the status that the Coyotes were hoping for when they drafted him third overall in 2007. But he was a very useful player for the Sens and then things just kind of fall apart, right? And it, it shows just how contracts can be really tricky and trying to figure out, okay, so which player is going to make it, which one's not, and then they're in their prime, are they going to get better? So he, he played in 07, 08, he played three games with the Coyotes, had one assist. The following season, 08, 09, in 63 games, he played eight goals, or he's, in 63 games, he recorded eight goals, 12 assists for 20 points. And there was some discussion about whether or not he'd been rushed, some discussion about whether or not he was ready. And so 2009, 2010, they made the right decision. They left him in this, the AHL. He played for the San Antonio Rampage that full season. And he played well. His production was good. So 2010, 2011, he's back with the Coyotes. Higher expectations. Play 65 games, 11 goals, 14 assists, 25 points. So the production comes up a bit, but not definitely not to, a, to, to the level that I think the Coyotes would have been happy with. And then in the playoffs... He has one goal, two assists, three points, and four games. So, produces in the playoffs. It's a rare playoff appearance for the Coyotes. So, you know, uh, December 17th of 2011, he ends up getting traded. Notice, December 17th, he played a grand total of six games with the Coyotes to that point. He had been in a holdout. He'd been in a holdout. So, he is traded for a 2012 second round pick to the Ottawa Senators. And, you know, it's after a holdout, and I guess the Coyotes just wanted to, you know, cut him loose. And he goes to Ottawa, in Ottawa, 49 games played after the trade, 12 goals, 17 assists, 29 points. So he produces at a much better rate with Ottawa right out of the gate, plays seven playoff games, one goal, two assists, three points. 2012-2013, lockout shortened season, plays 48 games, 12 goals, 17 assists, 29 points. So the goals, assists, and points, and games played for Ottawa, almost exactly the same all the way across the board. In 10 playoff games, he has 6 goals, 3 assists, 9 points. And it's the 2013 playoffs that woke me up to him, and you know I realized, hey, I, I like the guy a lot. And, and I say that as somebody who has cheered for the Senators at points in time over the last 30 years. Uh, so 2013-2014 in 82 games, he has his, his best season to date. 26 goals, which more than doubles his goal total in any season before that. 32 assists, which almost doubles that. 58 points, which is exactly double his career high before that. So, yeah, things are pretty good. For the Senators as a team, well, they're not in the playoffs, but uh, Kyle Turris now has arrived. 58 points, and things look good. And 2014-2015, they actually get better in 82 games. So he plays every game three years in a row. Uh, 24 goals, 40 assists, 64 points for Turris. Good player. Six games in the playoffs, one goal, one assist, two points. So things are absolutely looking very good for Kyle Turris. He's now found his home in Ottawa. 2015-2016, he misses about a quarter of the season. Ends up playing 57 games. Records 13 goals, 17 assists, 30 points. So quite the drop-off in his production. But again, he misses a lot of time. It's forgivable. Bit of a down year. He does bounce back in 2016-2017. 78 games played, 27 goals, 28 assists, 55 points. In the playoffs, 19 games, 4 goals, 6 assists, 10 points. But he wants a new contract. Ottawa wants him to sign a long-term contract. They can't agree on a contract. And this is becoming a problem. Now, for the Senators, of course, that 2017 run, that's like hallowed ground for for Sens fans and Turris played his role for that team 2017-2018 as Kyle Turris is hemming and hawing about whether or not to sign an extension and this would become a storyline with the Ottawa Senators for years after this that players don't want to sign extensions with the Sens what's the plan the Sens just don't seem to be making strides so if I'm going to sign a long-term contract I'd want to do that elsewhere and we would see guys like Stone 
and Carlson and Duchesne. Oh, Duchesne hasn't arrived yet. The reason being, uh, he is acquired in the Kyle Churis deal. So he plays 11 games with the Sens, three goals, six assists, nine points. Good production. November 5th, he's traded in a three-team deal. This same day, he signs a six-year extension with the Nashville Predators worth $6 million per season. So he gets his money from Nashville. Ottawa trades him out. And Ottawa acquires Matt Duchesne in the trade. <clears throat> this trade is ridiculous because Colorado acquires a lot of assets just so that tourists can be traded for Duchesne. Colorado gets Shane Bowers, Andrew Hammond, a 2018 first, which was protected, believe it became 2019, and, and uh, Bowen Byram. Uh, Vitaly Kamenev, or Vitaly, Vladislav Kamenev, I even wrote it on the board. Uh, 2019 third, a 2018 second, and Samuel Girard. So Colorado comes out pretty well in that trade, but he, he, for Kyle Turris, he gets his money. He's going to a team in Nashville that needs help down the middle. Good news, Turris is a center. So this should work, and this is one of those cautionary tales with signing a long-term contract with a team you haven't played for yet, and we'll see how it goes for guys who signed long-term contracts this offseason with teams they haven't played for yet, whether it's Huberto, whether it's Goudreau, whoever you want to throw in here, Kadri, the reality is, until a player is played with that new team, you just never know. In 65 games with the Preds after that, 13 goals, 29 assists, 42 points. The goal scoring isn't exactly where they'd want it to be. So he ends up with 16 goals, 51 points overall. In the playoffs, he adds 3 assists in 13 games. They definitely would have wanted a goal from him in those playoffs. But while the contract looks iffy after that first year in Nashville... The first full year, 2018-2019, it's rough. He only plays 55 games, 7 goals, 16 assists, 23 points. The scoring's gone. The player that he was in Ottawa, the player that was one of my favorite, uh, I want to say second-line centers in the game, it's just gone. And all I could think to myself was, you know, if he'd stayed in Ottawa, uh, hindsight is 2020, right? Um, it, it may very well have been that Turris just suited Ottawa. Ottawa suited Turris. So in the playoffs, he adds a goal and an assist in six games. 2019-2020, 62 games played. Nine goals, 22 assists, 31 points. In the playoffs, no points in four games. And he's a minus four as they lose to the Arizona Coyotes in the play-in round. So it is a it is a rough ending for Turris. Turris signed that deal November 5th of 2017. October 7th of 2020, he is bought out. The Nashville Predators are on the hook uh, for a while still with the tourist buyout, but it was a move they felt they had to make. Absolutely a move they felt they had to make. So he is a free agent, not for long. Two days later, he is signed by the Edmonton Oilers to a two-year deal at $1.6 million. Now, this looked on the surface like a good move by the Edmonton Oilers. Tourists, a couple of down years with Nashville, but he's not old. Not old, not by NHL standards or any standards. And he could still bounce back. Maybe it just wasn't a good match with Nashville. And in Edmonton, it actually kind of gets worse. 2020-2021, uh, he only played 27 games. Two goals, three assists, five points. 2021-2022, I remember he cleared waivers at least twice. Plays 23 games, one goal, three assists, four points. And so, at the end of it all... Uh, he, he doesn't get into playoff action with the Edmonton Oilers. He ends up being a player who does clear waivers, even though the, the deal he signed with the Oilers at two years for $1.6 million per season. Just remember, this is, this is only a few years after Ottawa couldn't sign him, and he ends up signing that six-year, $36 million contract with Nashville. And that is how quickly things can change. That is how quickly a young, uh, up-and-coming forward can become you know, kind of kind of cast off and all that. So 776 games played in his career. And I'm, I'm going to say, I know people will say the word bust. To me, a guy who played almost 800 games is not a bust. We can say that he didn't achieve what was expected when he was drafted. But to me, if you play more than 10 years in the NHL, you're not a bust. 168 goals, 257 assists, 425 points. A lot of those points when he was playing with Ottawa. In the playoffs, in 69 games, he adds 14 goals, 18 assists, 32 points. And the question I'll always have is, so what if he had just signed with Ottawa and stayed there? Does the Duchesne trade not happen? 
Do the Colorado Avalanche not get those tremendous assets in that deal? And then by extension, uh, do the Colorado Avalanche, who springboard off that deal into other moves, win the Stanley Cup in 2022? There's a lot of what-ifs in there. So, for Kyle Turris, accidentally, I think he kind of helps Colorado become a powerhouse in that trade. Although, Duchesne is the one that was the big big fish that had to be moved. But Turris goes to Nashville. And uh, the Preds gave up Gerard Kamenev. Uh, the second round pick was theirs as well. So, I, I mean, it was expensive. Anyways, there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below regarding the career of Kyle Turris. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.